These clips are meant to just pull your hair off your face, but now I've just been wearing them as if it's meant to be worn in the hair. We're gonna leave them. I think they're kind of cute. Hello everybody, it's Jacqueline. So today, this is a long overdue video. I swear this has been on my list of videos to do for probably four years. Thank God I didn't film this four years ago though because I have upgraded to a lot better gear, I have a different process, and I really just wanna walk you through how I make my YouTube videos. Before we get started, I do wanna thank Filter for partnering up on this video. We will chat a little bit more about them later, but basically Filter is an amazing online music library that really just kind of streamlines the process of getting great music for your YouTube videos. You don't have to worry about like licensing and copyright and all that stuff, it's all covered with the platform. Filter makes it so easy to discover songs and like find the right mood and they have curated playlists, so really easy if you're picking out music while editing for your YouTube videos. I know when I got started, music was like the most stressful things. So I didn't understand what the proper rules were and protocol. Filter really is that dream platform. I'll have a link down below in the description. It'll be at the top there. You can kind of click it, check it out. And when I tell you this will make your process of editing YouTube videos that much simpler, I mean it. We'll dive more into it, but thank you Filter for sponsoring today's video. It's so great to partner up with services that I genuinely use. Okay, so I'm gonna start off explaining things kind of in the process of which it would happen. First things first we gotta talk about is gear. Now, one, I'm gonna preface. I don't know everything about gear. I might explain something wrong. Just, just let me know in the comments if I'm saying anything wrong. But that being said, over like the past six, seven years, I've really kind of dove way more into the world of gear. And honestly, that's how I learned how to use cameras properly. And even just like learning about aperture and ISO and all of those things that when I bought my first camera, when I decided I was going to make YouTube videos, I didn't know what that was. So before I start talking about actual gear, I also feel like it's important to acknowledge that one, this may be overwhelming, but two, I also don't want this video to deter anyone from creating content because it seems like you need to buy a million things and put $10,000 up front to start a YouTube channel. That is not true at all, and that is just not the reality. This is obviously over years, this is my job, and I've slowly reinvested and kind of built this collection. That being said, ultimately, all you need at the end of the day is something to record on. It can literally be your phone. Phones record at such high quality. It films sometimes in better quality than like the cameras you would actually buy. So you literally just need a device to record, and all you need is some Wi-Fi and some internet to upload it. So in simplest terms, that is a great starting point, and you literally, we all start somewhere. So if that's all you have access to right now, still do it, okay? But that being said, I want to show you what I'm using. So right now I'm filming on the EOS R camera, which this is a recent purchase for me. I was filming on a Canon Rebel T3i from the very first YouTube video up until about six months ago. When I tell you that camera does not have autofocus, it doesn't have autofocus. And there was just so many things that at the time it was a great kind of starter camera and really easy to use and user friendly. But now the EOS R was a great upgrade. I love it. It has really snappy like autofocus pull and it has a really silent autofocus. I bought a new lens as well to go with it. The lens that I ended up buying, I was humming and hawing for a while because it is an expensive lens. I'm just gonna put that out there. It is ridiculously expensive and it kind of like broke my heart a little bit, but I knew it was something that I wanted to invest in for the art of it. And it was going to be probably my most used lens, if at all my only used lens. So I got the RF 24 to 70 millimeters, 2.8 lens, which I love it. It is amazing. Now, one thing I will say, lenses are so, so important. And I remember when I was getting started, I didn't really understand that. I thought it was more the body of the camera. And sure, the body is important, but the lens obviously can change the overall look so drastically. So this is the main lens that I use if I'm doing like sit down videos and I want a super high quality video. If I'm filming like a makeup tutorial and I want to get super precise. What's nice about this lens is that I can literally just boop, make it wider. I can really zoom it in if we want to. And this has just such crisp quality. I've got that 2.8 f-stop, so I got that kind of like blurry background. But for me and what I normally do when I'm like more in a controlled setting and I have a smallish room to film in, this lens is perfect for my situation. That being said, it depends what you're filming, what you're doing. If you're gonna be filming, say, beauty videos or sit down videos like this, and you're gonna be in kind of a similar environment, a lens like this was a really great option for me. And my goal also is to have kind of the least amount of lenses as possible. And if I'm gonna be traveling with a camera like this, I feel like this is a very versatile lens and I'm not someone that like shoots, you know, animal photography. So I don't need a crazy big zoom lens or anything like that. So this for me is the dream lens, dream camera combo, and I absolutely love it. I also have a Rode mic on top of it, which is the Rode Mic Pro. And I just kind of plug that in to all of my cameras whenever I'm filming, whether it be my main camera like this or my vlog camera. Next up, this is my medium sized camera. So my main camera is like my big camera. I call it, this is my medium. And I also have a little small little pocket camera. So this one here is the Canon, what is this? The Canon M50, which I think was like 
Canon's interpretation of the perfect vlogger camera. You've got that flip screen and you can attach a external mic onto it, which is great. And it's mirrorless. You can change out the lenses. It honestly overall is a really great camera. And this is what I film all my what I eat in a day videos on. Pretty much any kind of day in the life, weekly vlog kind of video, this is 99% of the time what I'm filming on. And I really like it. It's easy to use. My whole thing, especially when I'm like vlogging or more on the go, is I want something that's not fussy so it doesn't interfere with the moment. I can just turn it on, shoot, and there's not a lot of fuss. I also absolutely love these Joby tripods. So this one I can like curve and you can just do a lot of things with this. So this is a great thing. I always end up holding it like that. And like I said, I normally pop the mic on top of this. This has decent audio quality on its own, but if I have the mic, I might as well just pop it on top. And then going on to the baby camera, this is an oldie but a goodie. And it's got like a little baby Joby tripod for it as well. This is the Canon G7X. This is the original model. I know they've come out with more models since then. Flip up lens. This is, I feel like what, I mean, at least like every kind of lifestyle vlogger that I seem to watch, I feel like everyone shoots on this. This camera, I have to say in recent time, is probably my least used camera. The only time that I would reach for this is if I'm going out and I need a really small camera to go into my bag. But even then, sometimes I end up just opting for my phone to vlog on. So this is really only if I want something super compact, but like the size difference is quite substantial. But you just get less, you have less options with a camera like this. So this one I would really only recommend if you're vlogging, you want something super small. But again, it still has a place and I still I still like it. It's still a great camera. The audio quality can sometimes be a bit uh, on it. I actually had a little like homemade wind muff that I had put on it at one point, but I took it off. But that is the baseline for cameras. Um, also in terms of lenses, actually I have these sitting in front of me. It's worth kind of talking about. I ended up getting a mount adapter for my new Canon camera. Just because the R camera, it's a mirrorless camera. It actually has different lenses that go with it. So all of the old lenses that I had for my DSLR before weren't compatible with this. So what you actually have to do is get a mount adapter and basically I kind of pop this onto the camera and then I pop the old EF lenses onto it and then it actually works. So the reason that that's good is if yes, you have an old collection and you are not ready to make the switch and you don't want to have to buy new lenses, there are options. For me, something that I remember when I was considering switching over to the R was the fact that I love this lens. This lens is what I use to shoot all of my videos on and it gives you that amazing blurry background. This is the Sigma Art lens. It's the 35 1.4. The 1.4 means you're gonna have a really low aperture, which is gonna give you that really like blurry background, which is often more of like a cinematic kind of look. And I remember at the time, that's like all I wanted because I had had just like the standard kit lens before. So this was a really nice upgrade. It's like quite heavy. Okay, so do you see how you get this blurry background? Like it's super blurry and just but I can't zoom this camera at all. So this is full arms distance away, but it's still pretty like close up, right? So it all just depends on the look that you're going for. So when I did do my camera upgrade, I wasn't ready to kind of give up this amazing low aperture. So I ended up getting the mount adapter so I can just kind of boop, click that on and then attach that onto the R model, which is great. So yes, love this lens as well. It's a beautiful lens. The only thing about this is that it is a prime lens. So I don't get any of that zooming flexibility, which is what I love about the lens that I have on it right now. So yeah, you got options. The only time I would really honestly use this lens nowadays is if I'm doing like really close up product shots or not that I do like portrait photography, but like I would use this for something like that. But I knew the 24 to 70 millimeter 2.8 was going to be my baby. So I was happy to um, make the investment. I hate when people like just talk about expensive things. They're like, oh, it was an investment. I don't know if that's an investment. I guess a lens actually you can resell. So maybe it is. In terms of other things, sometimes if I'm doing voiceovers, it's nice to have a good mic. This is the Yeti mic. Mic, the blue Yeti mic, I believe is what it's called. Like I said, I'll have links to all the products down below with the exact links. So you can check everything out. This was kind of like an additional luxurious thing that it's not necessarily necessary. Sometimes what I would do prior to this would just like film my voiceovers on my Rode mic. Honestly, I used to record voiceovers on the iPhone. When you think about it, the iPhone is meant to be a phone to talk. So it's got a pretty good microphone inside. So I would always just kind of record airdrop to my computer. That's a really great option as well. But if you're doing say a podcast, any Zoom interviews, have an actual like mic like this, a USB mic is a really great option as well. This has been very essential for my Zoom setup. I just feel like it takes your video quality and sound quality to the next level. And then you enter a Zoom meeting and people are just like, what is happening here? <laughs> That's like my favorite thing. In terms of other gear, lighting is a big thing. I normally always shoot with my ring light. I've got two um, umbrella lights here. I've got a reflector to kind of help bounce light. I'm in more of a controlled lighting setting here, but if you are maybe more in natural lighting, I found the reflector to be really nice to have as an option. Also, these things are 
are kind of cool. I wish I had charged this. This is um, an RGB kind of like mini light thing that you basically can make any color and it has like a dimmer on. So if you kind of want some mood lighting to add like a red lighting or like just like add a little punch or something, I've got two of these and these are really useful for more of like creating a vibe. Um, so these are kind of cool. They're very powerful for how small they are. Tripods are also a big thing. I've got a pretty sturdy tripod for my main camera. Beyond the Jobies, I also think phone tripods are really good. I'll have one like this kind of linked down below. These are just really good for taking on the go. Great for taking your own Instagrams as well. But like having a little Bluetooth clicker can be really useful. So would definitely recommend that. Ooh, and last but not least, this is very important, a backup camera battery. Also, I'm curious what actual like cinematographers and people who are like into filmmaking, what their opinion is on this. But my personal recommendation is buying the name brand batteries. I thought I could just kind of buy cheaper ones off of Amazon and I didn't think it would be anything different or cause any harm but I really honestly ended up killing my camera at my last um, DSLR it, that had the worst battery life ever and whether I was using the name brand battery afterwards or like the fake ones that I had bought it literally would not be on for longer than 10 minutes it would die and it was just so frustrating and it was my own fault so I can't even complain about it but anyways when I ended up upgrading the new camera I was like screw it I'm just gonna spend the money and buy the proper name brand battery and it feels ridiculous and you're like why are you paying so much money for a stupid battery why don't they just give you an extra battery i don't know it's really frustrating but um worth it in my opinion okay oh i hate that it's worth it i really do okay so that's pretty much all of the year for filming the next kind of phase of things that i want to talk about is post-production when we're editing creating the video the export all of that the first thing you've got to do take out your memory cards obviously memory cards are also an essential i like 128 gigabytes like might as well give me give me all that storage you know so you're gonna take the footage, you're gonna import it into your computer. After about a week of making videos and putting raw footage onto your computer, you will realize that your computer is gonna hate you. So that's when you're gonna to wanna to invest in an external hard drive. I have so many external hard drives laying around my house. I'm also someone who's very like nostalgic and also I, I think it is a good practice as well to just save all of your footage. So I save every single piece of video that I've ever filmed ever in my life, as well as obviously like the finals and like the timelines and everything. So that ends up taking a lot of storage over the years so you gotta buy some external hard drives you gotta just do it I pretty much always use these Seagate ones I don't know if these are necessarily like good I haven't had any issues with these I'm also eyeing though there are these um I think they're Samsung like mini they're super tiny and like sleek they're really expensive but they're so compact and I've heard really good things about those hard drives I just need to like again mentally prepare to spend that money on a hard drive but that's next on my list so if anyone's tried those let me know as for editing I pretty much only use Final Cut Pro it's just what I'm comfortable on and that's kind of what I learned to edit on and I, I honestly really like the program I think it's super easy to learn there's tons of tutorials online as well and literally everything that I've learned has been through YouTube and through other people and has just kind of been on my own which if I can do it and I'm no professional by any means I'm sure a lot of people can learn on it as well so that's just what I added on and now I've recently upgraded and I have a video editor which has been a huge game changer I think if that's something that you end up getting to the level where that is kind of a you know a next step that makes sense for you I would definitely recommend it I remember once I hired my lovely editor Megan shout out to you you're definitely editing this video right now it honestly was just a world of a difference in terms of the time that I had and also I think it's really important to hire people that are better than you at things at first it was hard to kind of I think release that control because I was so used to doing everything on my own and I also can be very bossy and picky about things so I think there's always gonna be a learning curve with anything but if you hire a great person and they're open to learn and and I just think you really can't go wrong. So honestly, I think that's a really great next step. It's also just great to have another pair of creative eyeballs on something. And the way that our flow kind of works, I end up just sending her the footage. She sends me an XML so I can have the timeline to work on. And I always kind of just go through and do some final touches and just add my like little kind of Player, I guess you could say on it and that has been working out great and it still gives me the level of I guess control that I know that I can kind of go back in and just kind of dig around um, but also the bulk of you know the storyline chopping and most of the creative and stylistic things are kind of already done and they have like a good baseline or they're complete it really just makes everything a lot easier so outsourcing is definitely something to consider especially as you are scaling up in your own business if you're just starting out obviously I think it's really great to learn um, learn those skills yourself obviously I would not change the timeline of how anything happened. I'm glad that I am a proficient enough editor that I can either speak in that language to communicate what I want
want done, but also I can kind of go in there and do things on my own. Whereas if I just had an editor right out of the gates, it, it just wouldn't be the same because I wouldn't I wouldn't know how to communicate what I wanted, I think. So yes, definitely recommend learn on your own, but also know when it's time to outsource. Okay, the next thing I want to dive into while we're editing is going to be music. Now, of course, this is where a sponsor filter comes in. And honestly, filter has been a huge game changer. I think that's like the number one question that I hear all the times from, from YouTubers or creators. They're like, where do you get your music and copyright and getting demonetized and licensing? That can be a whole other aspect of the job that you have to kind of learn and understand. And it can be very overwhelming at first. And I remember I was genuinely just very scared and I didn't know what was right, if I could just use music and give credit. And I didn't necessarily know all the legalities, especially when I was younger starting out, but I knew it was something that I was supposed to know. So I always feel like kind of music and using music in YouTube videos is kind of this like, who like, mis not mysterious world, I guess it is very clear cut, um, but it can be very hard and challenging to find music that you can use in your videos. And it can be at a time it was really unaffordable to pay the rights and licensing and all this stuff. That is where Filter comes in and this is how they are amazing. They are a huge audio library that has a ton of different Artists, a ton of different genres of music, curated playlists, and basically it's a massive audio library that you can pull from. You have unlimited downloads and you really can just use them to elevate your entire video. Basically, Filter's goal is to have high caliber music to make your videos sound as good as they look. And they really honestly help streamline the process. Those playlists are great. I think they even had a playlist I was on it the other day that was like beauty and like lifestyle. So I already have a starting point versus just going through a bunch of track lists and like not really knowing how to navigate an entire library. Using Filter and having Premium music really does help elevate the quality of your music. I know you know that standard YouTube jingle that you hear everyone use and it gets repetitive and you can tell it's just not necessarily always the quality that you're looking for. And it's nice to have unique soundtracks that really just, you know, I mean, audio is like 50% of storytelling and having those amazing tracks, whether it's for like a vlog or a sit down video like this, or just to kind of supplement B-roll, it really can change the entire experience. Let alone if you're actually like creating small films or movies or anything like that. We all know how important music is. The beauty of Filter is that it really is high caliber, stress-free music anytime, anywhere. Gone are the days of 18 year old Jacqueline stressing about copyright laws and all of those things. You have two different kind of subscriptions that you can do you can do the free membership, which basically gives you access to all of the music in the library and you can still download and incorporate all those tracks into your videos. With that though, you can't monetize your own videos, but if you pay for the subscription, which is literally only $11 a month, you can monetize all of your videos on YouTube. You don't have to worry about any takedown notices. It is truly the most affordable way to incorporate great music into your YouTube videos. So that subscription is called the personal subscription and that allows you to whitelist your YouTube channel. And like I said, I got a link down below. So if you use that, you'll get $10 off your subscription, which is amazing. So what you want to do, click the link, sign up for the free account first, and then you'll have an option to upgrade to the personal account. That's when you can kind of add in the code and um, get the upgrade which is amazing. Once you have that upgraded personal account, you'll have full control and you'll be able to monetize all of your videos. And again, have that stress-free experience with Filter that I love. Also, if you notice, we've had some music going on in the background of this video. All the tracks that you're hearing in this video are from Filter. And if you go back and watch previous videos, I'm sure you're hearing tracks from Filter as well. What I also really like about Filter, especially as a creative, is that the artists get paid and they retain their rights. I'm sure all of you have heard horror stories of artists in the music industry and people signing away their rights to their music music or getting locked into these scary contracts. I'm so happy that Filter is not like that. Filter really does support their artists. And it's so nice to know that your monthly subscription fee is also going towards those individual artists who have made those tracks. So I truly wish I had a video like this when I was younger to watch. And I wish I was using a platform like Filter years ago. Um, Filter truly is amazing. It makes life so, so much simpler. I used to spend hours searching on the internet, trying to find royalty free. And that alone would totally deter me and slow down my editing process. Because you know when you're like, oh, I need this specific type of music to go along with it. And I'm the type of person that I can't move on until I figure that step out in editing. And like I said, it would literally sometimes throw me off track for like five hours. So with Filter, it's so easy. You literally just go on, download, boom, pop them into your timeline. And um, it really is as simple as that. So if you take anything away from this video, please check out Filter. I think it will really help you elevate a bunch of your online video content and be an amazing starting point for your YouTube videos. So check out the link below, get some dollars off. And beyond that, you can't really beat $11 a month. That's 
an amazing price in my opinion. But yeah, Filter, thank you so much for partnering with me. Like I said, it really is so incredible when I get to partner with platforms that I'm already using and loving. And Filter truly is my number one. Okay, so moving on from music, you've got the music laid out, you've got the storyline chopped up in your timeline properly. The next thing that you gotta think about, which I often do as like my final step in editing is like the B-roll to kind of make the video more dynamic. And that's gonna be like your secondary shots, whether it's like your insert shots or shots that just kind of supplement that maybe give a bit more context to what I'm talking about or, you know, add to the storyline a little bit more. And what that can look like for my videos, say for something like a vlog that's super casual and not like very movie magic like. It could be literally going to my Instagram stories and saving a video that I had filmed just for Instagram and supplementing that into the blog because when I think about kind of talking or being an engaging storyteller, my thing is that I would rather show you than tell you. And sometimes you can't do that all the time, but I also don't want to be the type of person that's just like, oh, I'm going to go do this. Next clip. Oh, I did this, but I'm not showing you what I'm doing. So I like to kind of add that additional B-roll just to kind of add a bit more spice into the video. You know what I mean? And then some final steps that normally happen in Final Cut as well is adding those kind of extra elements, whether that be my title card, like my name popping up, the end screens, and little sound effects as well. Um, just those little things that in my head, those are like the finishing touches that I kind of do um, as my final step. I'm actually really curious though, if you guys ever play around with editing, I'm assuming you're interested in that if you're watching this video. I'm curious what your editing process looks like because if I was to explain it, well, it's interesting. Obviously when I'm filming, I know how I, it's gonna come to life and how I want it to be cut because I'm the one filming it. So I see it as I'm filming, what it's gonna look like. And then normally I pull everything into my timeline. I kind of roughly skim through it and do a rough chop and kind of a rough organization of the order of everything. And then I kind of go in there and fine tune. That's when I kind of add music, start fading the audio. And um, the final step is those additional assets or elements and sound effects, titles things like that. But I do normally one final watch through, normally in two times speed because I can't stand to stare at myself any longer. And then I export, then I start to upload. Then some final things are like cut downs, thinking about how I'm gonna share them on social. And I guess the final kind of section of making YouTube videos that I like to think of is kind of like the release. And this is something that probably is my least favorite step if I can say that, because my whole thing when I started making YouTube videos, I just love making videos. I used to watch a lot of YouTube and I just really wanted to do it and that's where it came from. It was never like I had this big marketing strategy and this analytical background and all of that Like I was never necessarily into that whereas I've obviously become a bit more in tune with that world through my experience and time in this industry, but that was never necessarily where like my heart and passion lied. So the final step for me is like making those cut downs, planning release dates, kind of looking at my analytics, seeing when most of my audience is online, planning and scheduling when you're gonna post everything. For me also, I think the reason why like maybe I'm least excited about that step is because it feels maybe the most unorganic, if that makes any sense. Like in some ways, obviously I get it, the business strategy and you're like, oh, I want this video to perform the best. So obviously I'm going to take a look at those numbers and see what's best for forming. But then like the creative kind of like heart side of me is like, I just want it to feel authentic and I want to post it when I want to post it. I don't care about all those other things. So that's like my brain and my heart that often kind of, I feel like are fighting with each other. And I think I'm probably more, I'd say I'm like maybe 75% of more of like the creative and then 25% more of like the strategic like business, like do what's best for it. Um, so that's kind of interesting to navigate as well. And then the final step for YouTube, I make all of my thumbnails. I just do them on Photoshop. Again, I'm no photo Photoshop wizard, but I've always kind of played around over the years. I used to make them on like PicMonkey, I think it was called, like a free online editor. Now there's so many amazing apps on your phone and I know a lot of people actually make their thumbnails on their phone. So yeah, I pretty much do Photoshop. Sometimes I'll throw it into Procreate on my iPad and add in some elements. But Photoshop, honestly, overall, has been a pretty, pretty easy system for me. And then that is pretty much it. By then it's time to, you know, hit public, make the video go live. And then that's when all of you watch it. I normally spend like the first, at least like the first 25 minutes kind of checking out comments, replying, trying to engage with all of that, then that's it. Then the video is out there in the world and you can't really do anything else. So I hope you found this chat helpful. I remember back in the day when I got started, I would Google all the time, what is a YouTuber setup? How to make all of these videos? And like, there was just not as much information online. So I'm always of the mindset, like I'm always happy to like share the knowledge and spread the wealth. <laughs> <laughs> the way that I said that reminded me of, um, is it in She's the Man when Amanda Bynes goes, I got a lifetime of knowledge. I got a lifetime of knowledge. Um, I'm always happy to share the knowledge and spread the wealth. Um, so yeah, I hope you took something away from this. Let me know if you have any gear, what you know, cameras you like to use. I always love hearing what other people do because this is just what I do and it's what I've kind of found works best for me. But like I said, who am I? I have 
have no professional experience in this. I didn't go to school for this stuff. I'm just making this up as I go. But yeah, this is what works for me and kind of where I've evolved to over the past kind of seven years of making videos. Now something that I'm not gonna dive into in this video, but if there's interest, if you want me to talk about it, I can make a whole kind of like part two to this. And that's gonna be more of like the creator side of things, what it's like to be a content creator in 2021, what it's like to be navigating your emails, doing negotiations. Do you need a manager? Do you need a multi-channel network? How does all of the back end work with contracts, signing brand partnerships, and yeah, getting sponsorships from brands. That's like a whole other side of things. And I feel like that will be an hour long video within itself. But again, those are all things that I just kind of organically figured out as I needed to and learning what a media kit was and rate cards and all of that stuff. There's no rule book right now, but the positive is, is that I think a lot more people are talking about it and yeah, just, just letting people know how this kind of works. So we could do that. We could talk about pitches. We could talk about the business woman side of things. So let me know if that's something you're interested in because I'd be happy to talk about all that as well. It's really fascinating and something that I love about the way that I feel like a lot of the creative industries have shifted over the past couple of years especially is just the lack of gatekeeping and I feel like more people are happy to share information and I say this as someone who has been able to benefit from that as well I've gotten to learn from other people or watch other people's videos that they so generously share and it was something that I feel like was once exclusively reserved for people who went to film school or were in this very niche high class group maybe and what I think is so beautiful is that really art should have none of those parameters and the more that we can kind of share there's room for everyone on the internet everyone has access to the upload button and really there is an audience for every single type of content whether big whether small whether niche or huge it really doesn't matter there really is no limits when it comes to the internet so I hope this maybe inspires you or encourages you to just kind of get up there and do it the first video is always the scariest I was definitely scared to post my first YouTube video but it's so normal now who's not posting videos or making content for TikTok or online or whatever so the big sister advice is just get over yourself and just do it your first video is probably gonna be embarrassing and it's probably gonna suck hey everyone it's Jacqueline and today I decided to start a YouTube But guess channel. what? You're that much farther away from it already and time will only continue moving on. So that's my TED talk for the day. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think this is going to be much longer than I originally anticipated, but I hope you uh, learned something. Let me know if you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, I normally am in the comments kind of uh, answering around. So follow, comment, subscribe, like, do all the things. Check out that filter link down below. Huge thanks again to filter. Chef's kiss. Absolutely love you. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.